Hi, it's Tanya with Red Kernel Crafts, and today I just want to show you guys these storybook paper play sets. These are the three that you've probably seen before, the Forest Fairies, Beauty and the Beast, and Snow White, and I have three new sets. I have superheroes, supervillains, and Moana. So what I'm going to do is show you guys how to make the little boxes that they go into. It's supposed to look like a little storybook, so you can have all of these on your shelf, and they can all be standing up, and they look like little books. There's lines on the top and lines on the side. So it looks like a little thick little storybook and you open it up and inside are all the little characters that go with it. So the way this works is that I have the digital file for all the little items. So all the characters that go inside for the cover, the side, and the back. So you purchase the file and then you can cut these out, print them and cut them. And I also have them available in black and white so you can color them yourself if you want. That file comes with it as well. Oh, I'm gonna show you Forest Fairies first. That was the very first one that I came up with. Um, and it just looks like this and like that on the back. So there's a bucket and a ladybug and a heart. There's a little mouse. So what you do is go on to my shop and all these embellishments are available and I'm going to be selling them digitally so they look like this. This is the sheet of embellishments and you have the cover and the spine and the back of the book that you can add to your box. Um, so this is all the little pieces that come with this one. It's a little thimble and there's um, a table and a bunny and a teapot and a teacup and then there's the chairs that go with the table and then you have a whole bunch of fairies i have three boy fairies and six girl fairies and there's some of the girls and the boys and that one there's another little boy another little girl and another little girl and another little girl and then this is their little fairy house there and then you have um, a little ladder. So all those are available on one sheet and you just download them and then you trim them out and then you can line them with black paper. Another thing I did, these ones in particular, was I printed them out on magnetic paper and what you can do is put them on a little baking sheet. Now this one I got from the Dollar Tree but everything is magnetic and they look like that. If you have a scan and cut, it's awesome. You would love this project if you have one of those. If not, I actually cut these all out by um, hand. So if you're giving this to a small child, I wouldn't give it to anyone too little, but what you could do is increase the print size and make them a little bit bigger. And this little mouse, you could you know, blow him up to you know, 200% or something and make him a little bit bigger. So that's the forest fairies. Then we have Beauty and the Beast. So we've got the cover of the book there. We've got Beauty and the Beast and then there's the rose on the back. So you open this one up and here we go with all the characters inside. So I was obsessed with the new movie and Belle's blue dress so I had to draw her blue dress. So there she is there and then we have her papa. There's her dad and then their horse. Here he is there. And then I did Gaston and is it LeFou? I can't remember his name. And then here's their cottage. There's a little house. And then we have, of course, Beast and then Belle in her yellow dress. And then I did all the little items in the thing. So there's the armoire. And then for the characters, I stuck to the original movie. So, oh, here's the little handheld mirror. And then we have Chip. And then we have the Rose. And there's Miss, Mrs. Potts right there. And then we have Lumiere, although I did do the new feather duster, um, but I just thought the original drawings were kind of cute from the original cartoon. So there's all those characters. And then of course we have the castle and then we have the prince at the end there. So there's those guys. And then we have Snow White. So there's the cover there. Sorry, my phone is buzzing. We've got Snow White and we have a little apple on the side there and we open this one up and again we have a whole bunch of little things in here. So we have a little spade for the dwarfs and we have Snow White and the Evil Queen 
and then when she turns into the old witch. And then we have Snow White's Wishing Well. And then we have the little cottage that she comes across in the woods. It belongs to the little dwarfs. And of course I have all the little dwarfs here. Let's get them out here for you. So we've got Doc and Grumpy and Happy and Sneezy, Sleepy, Bashful, and Dopey. So there's all the little dwarfs, right like that. And then, oops, one of them just jumped off my desk. And then we have a little pie, we have an apple, we have a bucket, and then we have the dwarfs little um, cart full of um, gems there. And then we have the prince and the castle. And then what I did was I made these and their little beds for all the dwarfs. And the fun thing about it is they can actually sleep in their beds. So we'll take Sleepy and we'll just slide him in his little bed there. And it's just a flat little piece of paper. But they all fit in their little beds. How cute is that? And the way you can tell who's who is their hats on their head match the side of their pillow and um, and the color on their bed. So superheroes, here's Superman on here. Got superheroes and then we have POW on the back. So we have all of our superheroes in here. We have Superman, we have Wonder Woman, we have Spider-Man, the Hulk, Captain America, the Panther guy, we got Iron Man, the Flash, Green Lantern, and then we have <laughs> Batman and Robin. And I don't know if I'm mixing up different comic lands like Marvel or um, DC Comics or not, but anyway, and there's Thor. So there's all the guys and girls. And then we have Boom, Zap, Pow, and we've got a lightning bolt and Wonder Woman shield, and we have a little thingy here, and this lightning bolt thing, which I think belongs to Flash, and then we've got a spider web, and a bat thing, and a lasso, and a sword. So there you go, there are the superheroes. And if you're gonna have superheroes, you need to have some supervillains that they can argue with. All right, so here's supervillains. I've got the Joker on the front, and then we've got Poof on the back, and then these are all the bad guys here. So we've got the Penguin, and we have a little bomb, and we've got another lasso, and we've got a red lightning bolt, and a stick of dynamite. And we have the Riddler's little hook thing here. We have poof, bang, crash. And then here's the Joker. And we have Catwoman and Poison Ivy. And she's got her little stick thing there with her. We've got, uh, oh God, what's her name? What is her name? Um, you know who it is, that one. We've got Two-Faced. We have some Kryptonite. And we have the Penguin's Umbrella. We have Harlequin and her little um, thing there. And we have the Riddler. And we have a jail. And so when I cut this one out, I cut out the little things. So then you can take... Who can we take? Let's take the Riddler and we're gonna put him in jail and he's in jail. So those are the super villains. What is that girl's name? One of the kids I work with at school dressed like her last year and I cannot think of her name. Okay, and then we have Moana and she has her little pig and her chicken with her and on the back is a seashell. So in here we have her boat and we have Moana when she's little and Moana when she's big and then we have her chicken and her little pig is in here somewhere we have an oar and an island 
and we have, here's our pig, our little pig, and then we have the pile of rocks that she's supposed to sit her rock on on top, but if we've watched the movie, we know that at the end, she doesn't do the rock, she does her little seashell, so we have her seashell there. We have the little heart of the ocean, we have a couple leaves, we have the coconut guys, the little coconut warrior guys. We have Maui with all his tattoos. That was quite tricky to draw. And we have his hook right there. And then with Moana, we have her crown. And the way you do this one is the crown is printed out and then you'll see that there's like a little half crown. So when you take the full crown, so the picture, this is the full crown take the other half one and you glue it down on top, but don't glue it completely. You just glue just around the very edges and leave this part open in underneath so that, and then, then you take both pieces like that and you lay them down on your black paper and then you outline it with black. So it's just one sheet of black paper and then you have it like this, but when you leave it open, then she can put it on her head. How cool is that? You're going to need an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And I use the brown. You can use whatever color you want for your base, but I use the brown. So we are going to cut our first piece at five and an eighth inch by four and an eighth. And then we're going to score just so you don't get your pieces mixed up. So get a little scoreboard if you have one. And you want to lay it with the long part going sideways. So it's five and one eighths going this way. So you're going to score that at one inch and then you're going to score it at four and an eighth. Okay. And then you're going to turn and you're going to score at one inch and at three and one eighth like that. Okay. So you have your score lines like that. Now what you're going to do is a little score line from this corner down to this point here. So I just kind of lay it on my board. I just do a faint line to make sure that I do have it indeed lined up. So do that for all four corners. Get that ready to go. Okay, so we'll just put that one aside for a minute. Take the next piece that you have and you want this piece to be four and three quarters by three and five eighths, like that. Again, lay it down on your thing, going four and three quarters along this way. And you're gonna score at seven eighths, <clears throat> excuse me, and then three and seven eighths, and then turn, and then we'll score at seven eighths again and we'll score at two and three quarters. Okay, so this is the smaller side of the box. The box is actually two different sizes and it's just so that this part fits into um, the larger part. So score your corners again. So okay, now put that piece aside. Then we're gonna do one more piece. We're gonna do five and a half which this is by three and a quarter. And this is the cover of your book. And you're gonna lay it down going lengthways five and a half. And you're gonna score at two and a quarter and three and a quarter. Okay, and then you're gonna fold this up. And this is um, the cover of your book, like that. All right, so now, Keep your little score tool out, but you don't need the board anymore. You can put that aside. Okay, so we're gonna glue these. Now, fold all your score lines first and get a nice crisp fold. The nicer you do this part, um, the nicer your box turns out. Okay, so everything's scored. We'll do that with the other one. Okay. 
All right, so now we have to do some gluing. Just get your corners a little bit prepped first. Just kind of bend them inwards. Now, the easiest way I found to glue these is open it up to the inside like this. So you're going to put glue on this inside triangle here, this inside triangle here, this one here, and this one here. And it's just, I found it easier to do it this way because this is going to fold up and go against this edge. And so is this side. Okay, so that's the triangle inside there that's going to touch um, this little back wall. So it's easier to have it um, going this way and have it um, glued and ready to go because once you start folding half of the box up, then it's hard to get in the corners to get the other parts. Um, glued because it's already starting to fold up into a box. So put your glue on those um, four triangles, then flip it over and put it on completely on the complete square that's in the corner. Like that. And then like this one. And then you're just kind of gluing like all in one sort of motion. Kind of. Sort of. Alright. So now Take this, fold it in, and just tuck in those triangles right there. And then what I sometimes do is just lay it down on my desk and just push it down with the bone folder, just so it gets nice and pressed down, and just hold it. Tacky glue is very strong glue, but just give it a minute and it'll set. And then same with the other end, you just want to fold that up and hold it until it sets. Set it and forget it. And the box, this is, this paper that I'm using is the stuff from Michael's that you can get. Some days I go in there and it's five packages of this for $10. So it's the 50 sheets and it's the 65 pound paper that I use. This one here just happens to be a piece of copy paper. But this is how your embellishments will come. And then you just print it out. But I use 110 pound white paper. It's just a little bit stronger than this stuff. And I like the thickness of it. That's the kind I always use is the 110 pound. All right, so this one is done. So just sit this one aside. And you're going to do the same thing with this one. Just glue those inside triangles. And then on the other side, glue all the, put glue on all the squares. So, and if you glue the wrong parts, just cut it another piece of paper. Try it again. All right, so we're going to glue these four squares. Oops. My lamp. All right, so then just do the same thing and you just fold them up. Make sure it's nice and sealed. Fold like that. And push it down. Squeeze it. And the nice thing is this particular glue dries clear, so it's fine if you make. A little spillage. So make sure that's all pressed down really good. All right. Now, what I would recommend is getting this part done and getting these glued, and then maybe printing off the embellishments while you're waiting for the glue to hold up. But, because I'm not gonna make you guys wait forever, we're just gonna move on. Okay, so you can see that this box is a little bit smaller. The whole point is that it's gonna fold, on, fold up inside the box. And this took a lot of trial and error for me to figure out these measurements so that um, it would definitely fit and definitely open and close, but stay closed um, when you wanted it to, but it would open up easily. Okay, so now you're gonna take your book cover and you're gonna open it up like this. The small box goes on the right and the large box goes on the left. 
Now, what I recommend doing is gluing them down at the same time so that you can get them in the proper position. Because if you glue one down, let it dry, and then you go to put the other one on, they almost, they need to be, you'll see, they have to kind of be closed up together at the same time so that if there are any adjustments needed, you can move them around, which is a good reason to use glue that is strong and will eventually hold them, but you can move it around a little bit. So just put them down. This one here doesn't have a whole lot of overlap edge on top of the book cover. This one does have a little bit more um, just because it is a smaller box. So you wanna sit them down like this and don't leave them for too long. Close it up and make sure it closes properly. And then just kind of press it like this and make sure um, it's working. And then make sure when you open it up again, they come apart nice and easily. And then open it up and then really push it down where you've got them. If it's opening nice and closing nice, then you know you've got them in the right positions. Okay. So again, let's let that dry and we'll do the other pieces that we need for this. So we're going to need a sheet of black paper. Now, you know me, I line everything with black. You can see that there's black underneath the pattern paper here. So if you want to use another color, go for it. But I just always use black. Okay, so you're going to need a bunch of pieces here. So your first set of pieces, I recommend doing your paper lengthways like this. And you want to do a strip of paper that's three inches. And then you're going to do two pieces that are two inches wide. And this goes on the cover. And do another one. So these are two by three. Then you want a little piece for your spine of your book. So again, it's still three inches in length this way, but you want it to be seven eighths of an inch um, wide. So you're gonna go like that. Okay, so there's your three pieces. So you can take this and flip it over and you can glue down those three pieces. And again, the way I do my measurements, I always leave a gap around things. I like it because I just find it gives more interest. It, there's more dimension to it because you can see the different layers and the different colors of paper. So that's just my preference. If you want to redo your measurements and just add a little bit um, to it so it's totally covered, that's fine. I just don't recommend bringing the paper right over to the scored edge because it might be hard to, might be hard to open and close the book and then the paper will get all wonky. All right, so there's the spine. And there's my lamp again. I always tend to hit that with my glue bottle. All right, and then there is the back. Like that. And what you can do at this stage is do your pattern papers, but let's just keep working with one color paper at a time. All right, now we're gonna do the black for the inside of the box. So instead of three inches, which this whole strip is, we're gonna do two and, well, we're gonna do two and seven eighths. And then it's gonna be two inches wide. And this is for the larger box, because you want that to fit inside there, still with a little bit of the brown paper around it. So that was two and seven eighths by two. And that goes inside the box like this. And you could really like decorate this. You could do the spine, you could do the whole thing, but I just didn't want it too bulky because when this is closing, that spine in there, I didn't want too much going on. So I've just left it. So I'm just decorating the inside of the box. All right, so then on the small side, the small side, I started to put one in there, a little blooper. It was too, it was too wide. So let's do one and three quarters by two and three quarters. Yeah, I think that'll be a little bit better. Let's test that one. Yeah, okay. So it's two, I'm gonna write that in my notes over here. So that should be one and three quarters. So it's two and three quarters by one and three quarters for this other side. There we go. And that goes like that. 
There, okay, so those are done. Now we're gonna do some pattern paper. So on the inside, I'm going to do this. Well, I'm not liking that now. So the pieces for this is um, two and three quarters. by one and three quarters. This is for the larger box. This is for the side over here. And it gives you a little bit of an edge around it. That goes in just like that. All right, and then this one over here is gonna be two and five eighths by one and five eighths. And that's gonna fit right in there. Okay, so now we're gonna do the outside of the box. So we're gonna have two and seven eighths, like that, by one and seven eighths, just like that. That's gonna go there. And we're gonna need two of those, so do another one at one and seven eighths. That's gonna go like that. And then the one down the middle is uh, three quarters of an inch. It's hard to put my trimmer doesn't go past the that little section. All right, so this is going to go like that. I'm going to glue these on. And you can pick any papers that you want. It's whatever you like. I'm just picking these ones for this. Okay, so this fancy camera of mine shut off, so I don't know what you saw and what you heard or not. Did I talk about this? This is the shape that your book cover and the back of the book are in because it's from this shape. I basically traced this shape and drew that for you because I figured not everybody has a big shot and these particular designs. So you can trim that out and then you can trim it out on the black paper. If you have a brother scan and cut, you're gonna love doing this project because everything is done and ready for you. So that's the box, that's it right there. Then you wanna do the white like paper looking thing on the sides. So you're gonna take a piece of white paper and you're gonna trim it and you're gonna make it seven eighths of an inch wide. So I just recommend taking a whole big strip like this and then cutting three pieces. This one's gonna be three inches long and these ones are gonna be two inches long. And there's one and there's the other. And then those just go on the side and they go on the side of the big box because it's just gonna open like that. Like these ones here, I have the white on there but not on the inside of the box. It's just on the outside part that you're gonna see because I just figured that the more you open and close it, it would just get funny along that edge. So I just didn't bother with that part. So now you just put glue on them. Now I do lines on mine. You don't have to if you just rather keep it um, just plain white. I just think it looks cute with the lines. It looks more like the pages of a book. And so just glue them down like that. And glue this one down the long side. <clears throat> like that. And then glue this one on the bottom. And you can see that the more layers of paper we put on this box, the stronger um, it ends up feeling than it did when you first made it. There, so now all I do now is I have this Micron pen, it's a 005. You can use any marker you want. This just makes the lines just a little bit thin. And you just start at one edge and you go along and it does not have to be neat. I'm just freehanding it. You can use a ruler if you want, um, but you don't need to. And it makes it more um, fun and handmade, I think, if you just kind of do it loose. 
and it looks like an old book that has sort of the wrinkly pages. Do you ever see a book like that and it has like the pages aren't even along the edges? I love that. So, and then I just kind of line it up with the one down the other side where I already put the pages and then that way I have the same amount of lines going and separated the same distance along. Um, it is a digital download so you just, um, once you buy it, it's um, sent to your email and you can just download it. And you can print these out. I've had people like contact me if they're like, if they have a group of Sunday school kids or they're a teacher and they want to print off these. You don't have to go buying this design 30 times for me. Just print it off for the kids. Like it's fine. I don't mind that. Just please don't, you know, mass produce these and, um, you know, sell them that way. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind if you're, if you're printing them off or if you're having friends over some night and you guys are going to make these or whatever. That's okay. I just wanted to show you one little thing here. This is one of the Snow White's um, or the little dwarf's beds. So I just want to show you how I did that. So I did the same thing. I printed or I cut out the bed and then it has the little drop shadow part. So all you do is you glue this down to the black paper and if you don't have the scan and cut just cut out your bed. I always leave a little white edge and then just glue it down to black paper and trim it out again and leave the edge. Then you just take his little name thing here and glue that down separately to a piece of black paper like this and then you just glue this down to the bed, but you don't want to glue in the center. You just want to come down one side along the bottom and up the other side. And that way you can get your little, your little guy to go to bed. So you just glue it down like that. And if you have like, um, I don't know, even just like a little piece of paper, just do something like this and just kind of wedge it down inside there. Make sure there's no glue just to make sure there's a little space. And that's how you do the little beds. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and seeing what's inside each of these. So like I said, you can check these out in my shop and I'll come up with some new ones from time to time. I'm hoping to do maybe some Christmas theme ones. So stay tuned for that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back with some more videos soon. Take care guys. See ya.